sulfur in Saint-Tropez Breaking a stick with a brick on the sand Riding a wave in the wake of an old sedan Sleeping alone in the drone of the darkness Scratched by the sand that fell from my love My name is Dominic, uh, I'm a kite surfer since several years uh, and we, we started uh, doing kite surfing already in Austria with a school uh, in Podestorf at Lake Neusiedl. It's quite a good place for, for kite surfing with good, good wind uh, probability there and also often strong winds so it's a good place for, for practicing, it's a good place for kite surfing and that's where it all started for me. Uh, and uh, yeah, kite surfing itself it's uh, really fascinating uh, sports. Uh, it's it's some kind of new new action sports. Uh, it, it became really popular about uh, seven to ten years ago. That's when it all really started to boom to grow. Before it was just some addicts, some wind addicts who did some kite surfing, but uh, kite surfing, but the the equipment and everything. Uh, was was not the equipment we have today. Uh, you don't have uh, this kind of safety today. It's really safe sports. Uh, but with the, the old equipment, it was really also a bit dangerous. But now it's not dangerous anymore. If you really learn how to do it in a kite school, if, you, if someone teaches you uh, what's the main things you have to, to look after, the things you, you have to take care about, and yeah, it's really fascinating sport because because you're uh, you're doing sports outdoors. Uh, you have the wind. Uh, you feel the elements, uh, and yeah, it's just great and a passion for us. Uh, and there are different kinds also with the boards and the kites. So normally you have kites in the range in between seven square meter to thirteen or fifteen square meter. Uh, which kite you use uh, depends then on the on the wind, so on the strength of the wind. Uh, you use smaller kites when there's strong, heavy wind, and you use small, uh, bigger kites uh, when there's low wind. Uh, so you can adapt the kite always uh, to the weather conditions. And normally, a kite uh, has to have at least two kites. With two kites, uh, you normally can can cover a wide range. Uh, of, of wind conditions and to do kite surfing and in every condition. Uh, with the boards, there are also different kinds of boards. Uh, the most important boards are the boards uh, we use most, especially uh, at lakes or in shallow water when there are not big waves, uh, the so-called twin tip boards. Uh, twin tip boards are special because you can go in both directions. And it's also the best best boards for freestyle for tricks because uh, you can move quite quickly with that. Uh, and there are also some different kinds of boards, like for example, there are special boards for riding the waves. Uh, there are special boards for racing, which are faster. Uh, and I'm sure because it's a new sport, it will also develop. There will be new shapes. There will be new uh, new developments in the market. And uh, yeah. Everyone has to find out what's, uh, what he wants to do, if you want to do mo more waves, more freestyle, more free ride, and choose your equipment and, uh, depending on that decision. As you can see here, this is our storage. Uh, here's already part of our equipment. Uh, you see, for example, here is the, the so-called uh, twin tip board. Uh, it's shaped uh, similarly on both sides. Uh, so that's why you can go in both directions. You also have a handle grab, so it's easier than uh, to get in the board and if you lose it in the water to grab it again. Also on the back side, you see uh, you have this kind of fins uh, help you to hold the direction in the water because this part is in the water and uh, helps you then uh, to, to go to the right direction. Uh, this one is a freestyle board. It, it has uh, it has a shape uh, like a like a bit of a, a U, uh, so it's easier to pop out of the water with the board, uh, and yeah, 
So there are different shapes and uh, different sizes as well. So you take uh, rather smaller boards for freestyle and for, for good wind conditions. And they're also, if you compare it to, to this one, they're much bigger boards, uh, which are easier for free ride, easier for beginners to get out of the water. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's the main, main parts of the kite board then. Uh, you also have the, uh, the kites. As I said, you have different sizes of kites. Uh, we will see it then outside when we, when we take out the kite. Uh, this is, for example, 9 meter, 12 meter. So it's a bit too big to, to build it up here. Uh, but we will show then outside on the beach how, how you uh, uh, put on the kite, how you, uh, how you prepare your equipment for, for going out on the water then. Yeah, the next part is the, is the bar. Uh, the bar is fixed with the, bri uh, with the lines uh, to the kite, so you, you always have at least four lines, it also depends on the model of bars, uh, and you have two steering lines and uh, two power lines. Uh, with the steering lines you take the bar like this, and then uh, you just turn it to the left or to the right, uh, so you then pull the steering lines and, and uh, the kite goes to, to the, the right or to the left, and you can also pull and push the bar, uh, which makes a difference uh, how the kite uh, stands to the wind. And the uh, last important part uh, for kite surfing is the harness. Uh, you uh, put the harness around your waist uh, and then fix the kite in the harness. Uh, so you're always connected to your kite and uh, it's really important because uh, yeah, otherwise you, you would have to hold the kite for the, for the whole session and with, with this hook uh, uh, you can hold the kite and, and uh, it's important for kite suffering as well. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, depending on the weather conditions you also need a wetsuit there are also different kinds of wetsuits. There are thicker ones, there are thinner ones, there are one with, with long sleeves or with short sleeves. There are one, for example, like this, which is uh, also just over knee. This goes down the whole uh, feet and covers the, uh, covers the body better. And yeah, which kind of wetsuit you need uh, depends where you go riding. Uh, for example, there are also wetsuits really for winter. You can wear them also in the water when you only have three or four degrees Celsius or even less. And uh, yeah, but here we are lucky in Montenegro, so we have uh, good weather here and warm water. So we just need short and thin wetsuits in the pre-season. And in the main season, it's enough just to ride with board shorts. So it's good conditions here uh, and the wetsuit is here not such an important uh, accessory uh, a part of the equipment for kite surfing as it is in other parts of the world.
already have a kite school in Austria since 10 years. Uh, and one friend of mine, he is from Podgorica, uh, he told me about kite surfing here. This was about four years ago. Uh, kite surf in uh, Montenegro was not uh, so well known at that time in Austria, uh, also in the other German uh, speaking parts of Europe, for kite surfing at least. And so, yeah, I thought, yeah, let's give it a try. Let's see how wind is here, let's see the spot. And if if it's really a good spot for kite surfing, and uh, then when I arrived here in Montenegro, we went down from Podgorica to Ulcin, here to the beach, uh, and I was just fascinated by this country, going through these mountains, and then coming to the beach, which is amazing, this Velika Plaza, it's perfect conditions for kite surfing, it's a huge sandy beach, it's uh, nice surroundings, nice people here. And so we said, okay, why not try to, to start kite school also here? Because we think it works here, uh, we want to make the sport here more popular uh, and uh, we want to bring people from, from the German speaking countries or from, from the European Union here to this beach to teach them kite surfing. And I think it's a good thing for the whole region uh, to, yeah, for, to making Montenegro. Uh, one of the top spots maybe for European kite surfing, what it should be because the conditions are perfect. Yeah, when we start uh, teaching people how to kite surf, uh, we always start on the land. We teach them some theory uh, that's also important uh, to really learn how to do it. Uh, and we start with uh, small kites uh, which have not too much power, so it's not dangerous then uh, for the one uh, for the for the student. Uh, because it's important in the beginning it's not so easy to handle a kite and these training kites they're specially developed uh, to have the, 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 same, uh, the same shape or the same uh, feeling as a real big kite uh, but with less power uh, so it's not dangerous for the student. Uh, when, we, when the student uh, is fit and uh, has enough training on the, on the land kite uh, we go with him out to the water with a real kite, with a big one, but without a board. Uh, so he can just start uh, to get the feeling for the kite, to, to know how the kite reacts, uh, to know how he has to react uh, when there's maybe gusty wind, when there's some bit dangerous uh, situation. And yeah, you, you can can train dangerous situations or how to behave in that situations in, a, in an environment uh, which is safe with the teacher. And that's what we want uh, that the students after our courses, that they have the feeling, okay, I, I know what the kite is doing, uh, I know what, how I have to behave in dangerous situations, and I know the, the basics how to start riding. And we want to, to give the student after the course uh, everything he needs for training then on, on, uh, for himself. And, uh, but we are here as well for sure when he's training and we give him hints uh, if needed maybe one more uh, lesson with the teacher. Uh, but the most important thing for us is because kite surfing is, is our passion to give this passion also to our students. And yeah, I think that's one of the best things in, in life. Uh, when you can hand over your own passion to, to other people.